was talking before about Eden Park and some exciting uh, revelations around uh, cricket, a T20 that's going to be played over Auckland anniversary weekend. And we've got the CEO of Eden Park on the line, Nick Saunter. Welcome to the Matt and Jerry Show. Uh, firstly, congratulations on the uh, Auckland anniversary fixture. So just run us through this, Nick. There are two neighbours groups around Eden Park with virtually the same name. So can you just explain what they are and uh, what the difference in them is? Yeah, good morning, gents, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, this morning, um, yeah, just to clarify, uh, we have a residents association that um, that group uh, is pro Eden Park, and um, they conduct themselves in a very open and transparent fashion. They uh, liaise with the community. Um, they have surveys when they go in to uh, assess whether or not they're going to support activities at the park, and. Um, we're delighted to see that a number of those residents, and we had over 97% support, um, put in a submission uh, for the cricket. And uh, on the flip side, we have the Neighbours Association. That group uh, is a small small group. Um, to give it a context, uh, two of the members put in nine submissions against uh, the cricket. So it's just a, it's two groups. They have varying views. Uh, we're very much... Uh, committed to liaising with the community, but we want to liaise with uh, and get the true feeling and sentiment of the community. And, and we are very confident that uh, the community supports Eden Park and the residents support Eden Park. Could we uh, get a sort of a name change going here? Could, could one organisation change the name to the Pro Parkers and the other one change their name to the Park Haters and then it would make things a lot simpler for the public? Well, I think so, because um, what generally happens is that um, unfortunately, there's been individuals who sort of suggested that they have represented the community for the last 20 years, and we know that that's not correct. And uh, the work that we've undertaken with the community has shown that um, we have overwhelming support. And to put it in a context, the consent for the cricket cost us in excess of $100,000, and um, that was to get three hours of cricket played at the <laughs> National Stadium that's had cricket played since 1903. And I put that in the context. When we talk to our local schools, that's the equivalent of two teachers for 12 months. So I just think that at the time that um, in a country that prides itself on equality, Eden Park needs to be treated with the respect, the iconic venue that it is globally. Um, for this event, we're expecting over a quarter of a billion Indians to tune in to watch the game from Eden Park. So that's a great opportunity to showcase this beautiful country we live in. Yeah, it's interesting that we're celebrating that we have successfully campaigned to get a cricket game at a cricket ground, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's clearly where you play cricket. But um, when are we getting the big concerts in there? I mean, that's the big question everyone's uh, asking, isn't it? When are we getting the likes of Queen and your Elton Johns and your Deja Voodoo's playing at Eden Park? Well, it's certainly something that's on our agenda and um, we know that the support that we've got for the community, there is a number of mistruths that have been put out regarding concert content and I suppose for, for someone who feels very privileged to live in Auckland and proud to be the father of a little Kiwi, um, I, I feel ashamed almost that um, I have to discriminate against uh, musicians. Um, I don't see why my daughter, if she's going to be a sports person, she can perform on Eden Park. But if she wants to be a musician, she can only perform before a men's rugby game. It just doesn't make sense. We're talking to uh, CEO of Eden Park, Nick Sorna. Um, how many, just to clarify, how many events can Eden Park put on a year, Nick? Uh, 25 night events. And under the entry plan, we were granted six concerts as a discretionary activity. Um, our competitors, Mount Smart and QBE, They've got, uh, and obviously Western Springs have got it as a permitted activity. So we know after the Phil Collins event that uh, going through the process is on a one-off basis is too challenging and we need to be in a position where we've got surety and speaking to promoters last night, they're just excited to be able to bring content that otherwise is not coming to Auckland. Uh, we saw it last year with Phil Collins or Eminem or Bon Jovi or Billy Joel. All those events bypassed Auckland because they couldn't play at Eden Park. And even Michael Chug, when he announced uh, um, Elton John at, at Mount Smart, suggested that he'd much pra rather play at Eden Park. Um, there's more seats undercover. There's premium 
facilities for corporate packages, but also our capacity would be up to 60,000 like the Rugby World Cup. And we know that we can deliver those events um, to the people of Auckland with our transport connectivity. So exciting times ahead. And, and we just really appreciate the support we've got from the local residents, but all of New Zealand. Thanks very much, Nick. Thanks for your time. That's CEO of Eden Park, Nick Sauntner. He's doing God's work there. Eden Park, it's a cricket ground. We should be able to play cricket there. We spend a lot of money on the place. We should be able to have concerts there. It's insanity.